And we are live. The space heater about to shut off. Hello, Mr. Taylor. So, I want to try something here and see if it improves the sound at all. Because anytime I start listening back to these streams, like having the amp mic'd and then just using this for the vocals. Well, that thing picks it all up, right? So, if you could help, I'm just going to play a little bit with just the mic for the whole room. Then I'm going to turn on the interface mic and let's see if that sounds any better. If it sounds like basically the same, then I'll, we'll just stick with that. One of the things I want to get is a mixer, just like a small one for the desk here. Have a mic go into the mixer and into that. I can't, I, I thought I tried using like a lapel mic going into the camera itself at one point to see how it sounded. And it sounded like really muffled to me. Like, I don't know, there's something, something about it I didn't like. So I abandoned that idea. Where's a, where's a nice fresh pick? Too many damn picks over here that are just absolute crap. Was, uh, I don't know what it did. There it is. There's the one I've been using. Hello, Joe Lou. All right. So I do have the amp up a bit louder than usual. All right, so that's with... The, the mic picking everything up. Let me move this closer to my face. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. So here's the other way. Well, with the mic further from the amp. Hola, Ana. Alright, now I'm going to turn the mic to the amped, good lord, the mic on the amp. Let's see if it does anything better. i got to change volume a little bit, I think. Yeah, it's too much. Okay, with the mic on the amp does that sound any better is it like the same what do you guys think About the same. All right, well then, I'll just turn off the interface thing for right now. Okay. Well, we'll just do that, make it easier. Well, thank you everyone for your feedback. Definitely helpful. I do want to keep making things sound better for the stream, but you know, one thing at a time. Like, remembering, you know, getting in the habit Building the damn habit of, like, once the one stream is done, I need to schedule the next thing. I guess it kind of worked out. I didn't this time because I was... I was doing a bad job of time management today. Shame on me. All right. Now we're about to get into the meat of the stream. Once again, continuing with coattail riding. Actually, let me move this over. Should I do it? Eh, that's kind of like in between me and the amp. I guess I'll leave it right there. Anyway, what are we doing? Today's video... That's not the right one. I need to do that. There we go. Okay. That's the setup. So here we go. Demonstrating all seven modes in parallel, 
modal music theory by the channel signals music studio so as always this is the first time I am watching this video and hey remember the remember one of the more recent streams I said let's start a movement what was that movement we must stop saying all modes all chords all scales because there are far more far more than seven modes so most likely he's going to be demonstrating the seven modes from the major scale but he is not going to be demonstrating all modes because there are far more than seven he's going to demonstrate all seven modes from the major scale that is my assumption so please everybody stop saying all modes when you're only referring to the major scale modes there's so much more out there let's talk about those modes that are out there all right enough blabbing from me we can cover that up right now and let's make sure the desktop audio is on all right here we go a lot of students that already know oh, about the sounds... modes of the major I can't scale, hear it. but they're having trouble why can't I hear figuring it? out why did they learn the modes of the major scale. What's technical issues? Hold on. What's going on here? That's why. All right, that should fix it for me. Let's try this again. What's the point of? I've worked with a lot of students that already know about the modes of the major scale, but they're having trouble figuring out why did they learn the modes of the major scale. What's the point and what are you supposed to do with these? So that's really what I want to tackle in this video. And I'm going to demonstrate to you each mode. What's the point of each mode? How does it feel? What does it do? And in my opinion, this is extremely important. It gives you freedom and it gives you options as a lead guitar player to really color the tone of what you're playing over. You're not just stuck to sounding bluesy with pentatonic minor or sounding happy with major. You really get some options here and some really cool options. Each one of these modes has its own unique identity and its own unique flair. And being able to access that whenever you want as a lead player or as a composer, I feel is invaluable. So with just a little bit of work with our modes, we should be able to kind of harness that energy and apply it where we need. In order to do that though, we will need to have a little bit of theory under our belts. So in this video, I'm gonna start off with a little light theory on how the modes are built. Then I'll demonstrate to you each mode one at a time so you can really get a grasp of how it feels and how to identify it. Then afterward, we'll talk a little bit of the heavier music theory that goes along with playing modes like we will be playing them in this video, okay? So to get started, we really wanna know what are the modes of the major scale, and here's how I want you Told you, modes of the major scale. Not every single mode on existence, on existence, in existence, major scale ones. So do I agree that it's important to learn these modes? I think it depends on the situation. Do you want to create music that sounds like it's in a particular mode? Probably important to learn. Is it necessary to learn them? No. Is it helpful? Well, it was helpful for me. Learning the modes was very helpful for me. It took quite a while for me to finally understand what the hell a mode is. Because... Uh, you know, the way I was presented them was basically just, here, here are the mode shapes, here's the scale shapes, go, go learn them. But took some experimenting on my own before I finally realized how things can actually sound like the mode. So instead of me going on or demonstrating how I would play something sounding like a specific mode, let's see what he has to say. Let's see if we agree. And let's see what I can add to it, if anything. You to think about it. There's a lot of ways to think about it. But essentially, I can make a major scale by following this sequence of half steps and whole steps. A half step is just one fret or one note, and a whole step is two frets or two notes. So I want to start on G, okay? I'll be playing in G everything today. I'll be in G major, G Lydia, G everything. So I'm going to start on G, that's my lead. And if I do, uh, travel a whole step, another whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, a step, half step, scale, also known as G Ionian. Now, if I want the second mode of the major scale, all I have to do is offset this pattern of half steps and whole steps by one. 
And by doing that, it will give me a whole different sequence of half steps and whole steps and a whole different sequence of notes. All right. To get the third mode of the major scale, all I would do is the same thing. Just offset it one, and, one, and I get a whole different sequence. Keep going through this. You'll have all seven modes. And the notes, they all start they all start to follow up. Now, to pay close attention, you'll see that six of these modes contain the notes G and D. And the jam track I'll be playing over is just those two notes. It's just a G power chord, G and D. This means that I can play any of these modes over my jam track. However, I cannot play the Locrian mode over this jam track, and you'll probably see why. In my... I'm going to argue... Not much of an argument. I know what he's talking about, and yeah. But because, because a power chord is really just emphasizing the root note, you can still play the Locrian mode on top of it. Is it the perfect fit? No. But it, you can get away with it. I think it sounds okay. But I get what he's saying. He's not wrong. But I also don't think it's really that bad. I think it's okay. My Locrian mode, I only have a D flat. I do not have a D note to play. Now, Locrian is its own beast, but there's a lot to talk about regarding Locrian because it's kind of the odd man out in this situation. All right? So now that we have all of the seven modes there, what's important to know is what is the tonic chord in each of these modes? What is the home bass chord in each of these keys? And it might seem obvious, but you just kind of have to look in G major, for example, the first mode of the major scale, the Ionian. All you have to do to figure out the tonic chord is just look at the first note, the second note, I'm sorry, the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. By looking at one, three, and five, it'll tell you the notes of my tonic chord. That is G, B, D. And if I play G's, B's, and D's, it's a G major chord. So my tonic chord of G major is the G major chord. However, look at my second mode, all right? Dorian, you can see that if I look at the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, I actually get G, B flat, and D, which means the home chord of G Dorian would be a G minor chord, all right? That's important. As I'm gonna be soloing and showing you these modes, I'm gonna be outlining the tonic chord with my lead guitar. I'm not just gonna be playing up and down the scale. I'm gonna try to be, I'm gonna try to highlight the notes of the tonic chord to help really fill in the context of what key I'm in. Okay. Now I'm curious how that's gonna work because when it comes to making something sound like a mode, it's more to it than just playing or highlighting those three notes he's describing. Yes, those notes are certainly part of the mode, but the issue I, I can point out now, and maybe he'll clarify it later, but hey, that's why we're doing these streams, right? Besides me <laughs> taking advantage of someone else's work. Ah! Um, so looking at uh, all the mode information here, like, uh, let me go back so we see all, all the notes. Note, I actually get G, B flat. No, I need to go back further. Here we go. Oh. What happened? God damn it. It's there. What's important to know. All right. So we look here. He's talking because what he just said, if I understand correctly, he's going to make sure he plays these three notes, like basically skipping every other note here of each mode to highlight the key or the mode sound, right? That's what I heard. But the first mode, so your Ionian, Lydian, and Mixolydian, they all have a G major chord in it. So if all you do, well, if you, you put a lot of emphasis on, um, you know, highlighting the G, B, and D, if that's all you do, it's just going to sound Ionian. Like if you want something to sound Lydian, if we want it to sound G Lydian, you have to use that C sharp note enough times because that C sharp that's what makes G Lydian sound the way it is because if you look at your major scale here and you number the notes with the interval numbers so that's interval number one two three four five six seven Lydian has one two three sharp four that is a sharp fourth five six and seven 
that sharp four is what makes Lydian sound Lydian. And then mix a Lydian here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. F is the flat seven of G. So you need to make sure you hit that flat seventh interval enough times to have it sound mixolydian. So like for Lydian here, if you played like a suspended sharp four, so you had basically the notes G, C sharp, and D, that's a very Lydian sound. And a more common chord, just a G dominant seven, also known as a G seven, that sounds mixolydian. So when you are going to try and make something sound like a specific mode or give it that, uh, that quality, you have to make sure you play the unique intervals enough so that sounds different from Ionian or, or the other modes. All right, well, let's see if he actually does do that besides just highlighting the tonic chord, as he put it, for each mode. Because the same thing is going to happen with Dorian, Phrygian, and Aeolian. All three of those modes have G minor. And without playing the unique intervals enough, it's just going to all sound like G Aeolian. So we do need a bit more than just playing the first, third, and fifth note of each mode to make it sound like that. So question over here on YouTube, let's get to that before we continue with the video. Nuno says, so you basically highlight not only the major chord notes, but also the intervals that differ from the, uh, the Ionian to highlight the mode. Exactly, exactly. Because if you're just playing G, B, and D over and over again, it's just going to sound like G major. It's just going to have that Ionian sound. And that's not enough. It's like if you were playing over a chord progression that highlighted like the unique intervals, then yes, you could just get away with playing just th those three notes over and over again. Because the chord progression would be taking care of the mode sound. So someone's got to be doing it. Like it's either the rhythm player taking care of the mode sound. It's at least the lead player taking care of the mode sound. Even the bass player can do it. Someone's got to be doing that. Or everybody can be doing it. Thank you for the potatoes, Lord Potato. We have been blessed. So, yeah, we'll, I'll definitely demonstrate this whole idea of highlighting the unique intervals to make it sound like a mode. So perhaps he'll even have the backing track he's going to use available to us. Most likely it'll be on his Patreon, and I don't blame him. Don't blame him. Because... Damn it, this shit takes time and we, we gotta make money, right? Anyway, let's continue. Is what is the tonic chord in each of these modes? What is the home base chord in each of these keys? And it might seem obvious, but you just kind of have to look in G major, for example, the first mode of the major scale, G I right, You've heard this already. In these, word of. Try to be. I'm going to try to highlight the notes of the tonic chord to help really fill in the context of what key I'm in. Okay, and that's really important is knowing that each one of these modes has a home chord that you want to focus on. And as you can see, the home chord of uh, major, Lydian, and Mixolydian is a major chord. The home chord of Dorian, Phrygian, and minor is a minor chord. And once again, we have the odd man out. The tonic chord of Locrian is going to be a diminished, diminished triad. So. You might be able to guess it's not going to be very harmonic if you're spending the whole time hanging out on a diminished triad, which kind of might be getting the problem with Lohrian already, but we'll talk about that later. Now that we have an idea of the theory behind how I'm building these things up, all starting them from the same root, all starting them on G, it's time to actually show you what these things sound like. So once again, my jam track is just playing G and D. That's a G power chord. And I want to go through each one of these scales. I'll go up the scale. And then I'll do a little bit of improvising so you can actually hear the tone and the color develop for each one of these words. All right, let's start off with major. So 
might be able to hear Major is very happy. It's very bright. It's almost sickeningly happy. Uh, I think of classical music. I think of health insurance commercials, anything that's supposed to make you feel, uh, you know, elated and overjoyed. Uh, Major, it gets kind of bland, and it takes some work to really sound interesting with Major if you're trying to avoid that really sweet saccharine sound. However, if you're looking for nice big melodies and really singable choruses, you're never going to go wrong with Major. But you've heard Major before, so let's go on to something a little bit more distinct, and that would be the Dorian scale. Let's take a listen to that one. Good. So he is pointing that out. Note of interest, the natural sixth. In this case, it would be E. So that is important because you're. Uh, hang on. Because Dorian is very similar to Aeolian. So if all you did was hit like the those the minor chord notes. It's just going to sound Aeolian, but if you hit that natural six, as he's pointing out there, that sounds Dorian. If you did the, the minor six or the flat six, that will sound Aeolian. So Dorian's kind of weird, right? It's not really evil and dark like a minor scale. It's kind of got this kind of smooth, silky, I always think of Carlos Santana. Uh, Carlos Santana's jams and songs, a lot of them are in Dorian. And they're minor because they're, you know, cool and dark. They're not overjoyed. But they've got a little bit of flair to it, a little bit of bite, a little bit of spice put into that minor. It's not just a dark and depressing and rocking minor. It's got a little bit more pep to it. So I have to point out that the real important note in Dorian is that natural sixth note. Normally in a minor scale, I have a flat six, but in Dorian, it's a natural six. And it gives it that major lift. It gives it that little brightness that we don't expect. And when I'm improvising in Dorian, I try to make it a point to, to get back to that note at just the right times to remind people, hey, I'm not in minor, I'm in Dorian. Good. And it kind of brightens things up a little Good bit. Good points. So let's move on Excellent. to Phrygian. I'm glad he's pointing that out. Yep, that flat second is super important. Have to have that to sound Phrygian. So that is pretty interesting. You can hear Phrygian's got a very exotic flavor to it, like a Middle Eastern uh, foreign flavor to it. And that's really potent. My jam track used to be this bland, boring two-note thing, but now the jam track itself actually feels dark and deep and kind of mysterious, right? And that's because the Phrygian mode has colored your ear. I've outlined the notes of that minor chord, the G minor chord, and I have this note, which is a flat two. I have an A flat in there, so these two notes right next to each other give you a really, really dark flavor, right? So cool option for soloing over just one note or just a power chord is the Phrygian choice. And really the note you would want to be highlighting there is that flat two. Mm -hmm. So going back to something with a major tonality, let's take a look at the Lydian mode. Sharp four, very good, very good. Admit this is my favorite mode. It's very dreamy, disoriented, disconnected. It's a pretty neat floaty, one. and that comes from the fact that we have a major triad, a G, a B, and a D. That's our tonic chord. But we also have a tritone, which is a sharp four or a diminished five. And just that combination of notes gives you a very sci-fi kind of otherworldly feel. So anytime I'm trying to access that kind of emotion, I know that Lydian is a good place to start. Let's take a look at the next one with major tonality. That would be Mixolydian. That flat seven, good. I do 
love mixolydian. It's like major, but it's kind of watered down. It doesn't have that sickening sweetness of major. Uh, it's much more palatable, and it's way more fun and rocking and almost like an Irish flair to it. Uh, I found out just this week that the bagpipes are actually tuned to a natural mixolydian scale. So it makes sense that it, you know, it reminds know me of Irish music because I've heard it so much in traditional bagpipe music. So the uh, mixolydian scale is pretty much the same thing as a major scale. We've just flattened that seventh note, and that takes away the leading tone of major, right? And that was the leading tone right there, really pulls us to our root. Now we have a flat seven, which gives us kind of a more, I don't know, uh, unexpected feeling, right? And it definitely dilutes the happiness of my major scale. So once again, a very cool option if you're stuck with just jamming over a power chord. If major sounding too bright and happy, just try bringing in that <laughs> mixolydian scale instead, and you'll get something with a little bit more upbeat attitude. Very good. And it's still bright and happy, but just not dripping with, with emotion, you know? All right, now let's take a look at the natural minor or aeolian mode. So you've probably heard stuff like this before. This is the fact. Jolu says, would like to see this with the modes of harmonic minor. I'll, I'll, I'll do that today, too. We'll see if, uh, and if he doesn't have the backing track provided, I'll uh, share one that Alfred Potter, I think is his name, Alfred Potter put up, and we'll do it there foundation of most of our rock and roll music it's kind of traditional at this point i can't really put my finger on it other than it's dark yeah, rewind a little bit there I interrupt you. so you've probably heard stuff like this before this is the foundation of most of our rock and roll music it's kind of traditional at this point i can't really put my finger on it other than it's dark but it's important to be able to contrast minor with dorian what's the difference between those two well, I think minor is darker. I think it's sadder. I think Dorian has a little bit more optimism to it. What's the difference between minor and Phrygian? Well, that should be obvious. Phrygian has a real distinct uh, exotic flair. That flat two is extremely dark, and it's, I think it's much darker uh, than, uh, than minor. So hopefully those kind of words, dark and light, I mean, I know they're not physical things, but they're the words that pop into my head when I try to compare something like Phrygian to minor. Yeah, that's one thing I tell students, like, when you're learning new chords, scales, modes, things like that, think of descriptive words that fit, or, you know, that work for you. Like, how would you describe the Aeolian sound? How would you describe the Phrygian sound? So it, it might be different than how I would describe it, or other people, but I'd say... Maybe not the exact same wording, but I agree with everything he's saying as far as how the different modes go. It's like, yeah, Aeolian is fairly dark. Phrygian's much darker. Dorian is like like a mix between major and minor. So a little bit dark, a little bit light and happy. Like a little, nice blend of both. But I like his descriptions. So there's a little piece of advice you could take if you want when you're learning new chords modes and scales so you can call upon the different sounds and moods and all that pay attention to how it sounds to you take mental notes or even actual physical notes write down this chord sounds like this to me this mode sounds like this to me so this way when you're writing stuff and you want to create a certain sound you can think about like well i want it to sound i don't know otherworldly like well what scales or modes do you know that sound otherworldly to you so let's continue if my guitar player was jamming over a g power chord and if i wanted to have an exotic flair i know that phrygian would be a better choice than minor now lastly let's talk about locrian Flat 
Here's the problem. If I want to jam in Locrian, I'd need to be jamming on the home chord of Locrian, which would be G diminished. And hanging out on a diminished chord and pretending like that's going to be your home doesn't usually work out that well. Uh, it's You could do it as an academic thing, right? Just try to write something in Locrian, but without a root and a fifth. You know, a root and a fifth, those are like the two pillars of foundation for any chord. So now we're just left with this. A root and a flat and fifth. And this is not stable. So doing anything in Locrian is just going to give you something weird. And what's worse is it's not even that weird. There's better weird scales. If you're looking to sound atonal and chaotic, I think there's better choices than just Locrian. So to me, Locrian is like the remainder. It's the leftover stuff from all these awesome modes. Uh, you know, you got to have that leftover bad stuff. And to me, that's Locrian. That might not be fair to describe the Locrian mode that way, but I'll be completely honest with you. I haven't found any use for it other than to just goof around with it. And even then, like I said, if I want to sound goofy and chaotic, I would rather pick something like whole tone or an octatonic scale or some weird exotic scale like that. Oh, well, look at that. He just went and said some different scale names, which technically you could say are different modes. So yeah, there's more than seven modes. Come on, man. Stop saying all seven modes when you know there's more. So I hope this gives you a little insight into why you might want to learn your modes. You can see, I mean, over one jam track, I'm able to sound six different ways. But having access to that means that when I'm composing or when I'm improvising, I have more than just a few choices. And I think that's really important as a musician. Also, it is worth talking about a few other concepts that kind of dovetail into what we did here. You might hear the word modal interchange or the word modal mixture. Essentially, that's what we were doing in this video. We had one tonic, we had G the entire time. And throughout this video, I was in G major, then I was in G Dorian, and G Lydian, and G Mixolydian. Often when you're writing chord changes that borrow from the different parallel modes, then you call that modal mixture or modal interchange. Some people might debate whether this is modal interchange because I didn't include any chords. There was just one, you know, power chord the entire time. But the scales I'm playing, I'm playing are implying different chord tones, which kind of creates that feeling of motor, modal mixture. Also, if you look at all the different modes I played, it contained all 12 different notes of the chromatic scale. And this can be thought of as polymodal chromaticism, accessing all 12 notes by changing parallel modes across one tonic. And this idea is very closely related to what you might hear as pitch axis theory, which is the idea of having a stable tonic, like G in our case, and using different chord tones uh, to kind of launch us into different modes. For example, if I had a G major chord with a sharp four, well, I've got my G major triad and I have a sharp four, all of those notes are in G Lydian, so this would be kind of a launching board to play in the G Lydian key. Likewise, if I all of a sudden played a G minor seven chord, all of those notes are in G Dorian or in G minor. So I could use a G minor seven chord to kind of spring into that new mode. The whole idea of pitch axis theory though is that you are rotating on one tonic, just like in this video. So I really hope this clears some things up for you and maybe gives you some inspiration on your own lead writing and your own songwriting as to how to utilize this stuff. It's really important to learn music theory, in my opinion, but it's really important to be able to use it. This stuff isn't for factoids or for trivia. It's not something you, you know, recite, uh, you know, just for the sake of having the knowledge. It's ways of describing things that work. And as you can hear, all those things work. And music theory is just giving me a label to remember how it worked and how I can recreate it again. So I hope you learned something from this, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like this video, please like, subscribe. You know what to do. And I will see you in the not-so-distant future. Very nice. Good video. Okay. I need to do this again. So, so when I get back, we'll explore, explore the modes in more depth. So I'll be right back.
Okay. Let's see, does he have a link to the backing track he used in here? Mm, does not look like it. That is okay. All right. Yep, Alfred Potter guitar, and he also Cosmic Drone Reactor. Is this different than the one I saw? It was between two fifth chords. Interesting. Well, maybe we'll try both of those. I'll start with this guy. All right, uh, let's see, how do I want to have this set up? So let's, let's try another uh, another da, 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 um, little sound check thing. So, hang on, I still got my my knee sleeves on from the gym earlier. Figured I'd keep them warm because I forgot to warm up my room here <clears throat> before streaming today. Take them off right now. All right, so what I'm going to do, and what I could use your help with again, is some sound check stuff. So I'll have the desktop audio being direct once more. I'll listen to it in the headphones. And then let's make sure that the backing track stuff is loud enough compared to the guitar. We can hear everything. Jolu says, since the seventh arpeggio video, I'm so motivated. I pushed my practice time from one hour to three hours a day. That's, that's a lot of practice. Right, you're very welcome. Thank you for being on these streams and participating. Okay, let's see. Change this to this. So what we're going to be doing here is playing along with an A5 drone. So just like the video we watched, you can play basically any mode that starts on A is fine. Even does that include A Locrian? Yes. It may not sound perfect but whatever why was why was the stream being choppy just then what happened all right well hopefully that stops so uh, i'll play a little bit here and again if you guys could let me know if it sounds okay if you hear both the guitar and the backing track well that's what we want let's see how can i do this and there we go. All right. Let's move this down. All right, so let's start the desktop audio. Some. All right, so after, yeah, just let me know if you can hear both well. If I need to turn one up or one down, let me know. <laughs>
Okay. So, what I'm going to do is start by going between Ionian and Lydian because they're so similar. So remember, that the video we just watched, he talked about like kind of focusing on the tonic chord or the notes of the tonic chord. So it's basically the first, third, and fifth note of each mode, plus any additional notes that would make or that are contain. Uh, how, what am I trying to say here? In addition to playing the three notes of the tonic chord, basically the first, third, and fifth note of each mode, we need to play the unique intervals in the other modes as well. So when it comes to Ionian, if you just play the first, third, fifth, and let's throw in the seventh note as well. Guitar may be a bit down to hear the feeling with the backing track. Let me turn the backing track up a little bit more then. Because I can easily do that. Like to say, if you say like, oh, well, what are the unique intervals with Ionian? Like, you could argue that there are zero unique intervals with Ionian because that's like I consider it the mother mode or the mother scale because everything comes from that. Your Ionian mode is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just, those are your seven intervals right there. When you deviate from that, that's when you get unique intervals. So we could you know, play like a major seven arpeggio in there or really just focus on the first, third, and fifth and we got Ionian. So let's demo that first to get that in our ears. Rewind this track a little bit. There. Very 
obvious the difference between Ion and, and Lydian. So, Mixolydian, also very close to Ionian, but we have the flat 7 instead of the natural 7 or major 7. So, Ionian and then Mixolydian. plenty of stuff from the natural minor scale or your major scale already let's get into some more unique weird crap crap is that the right word no i'm gonna open up this mountain dew all right harmonic minor Let's see, I would like to also have some mode information up on the screen at the same time. Now, I can add a text thing here. Hang on, I'm getting this set up so we can have some mode info at the same time. Or would it be better... I don't want to do this. How do I want to do this? All right, one moment. I'm trying, I want to get a word processor set up. So this way we can see some mode info on the screen at the same time. So while I'm doing this, if anyone has any questions, comments, all that fun crap, that's it. Oh, by the way, I should really have this up on the screen right now. Currently running good old holiday special, right? Because that's what you do this time of year to try and maximize profits. And why would I want to maximize profits? Because the more I make doing this kind of thing, the more content I can create, the more I can stream. I understand that might sound like I'm full of shit, but it is the truth. Because if all I'm doing is teaching one-on-one -on -one lessons, I won't have time to do things like this. So basically everything, all these, these instruction courses you see up here, uh, you can get everything 50% off with the coupon code METAL2022. And if you forget what the coupon code is, well, it's on the website. Just go to milehighshred.com and there you go. Put that in at checkout. Everything's half off until the new year. All right. I need... What's this one? Nope, I don't want that. I need a window. Window capture... There we go. Okay. Almost ready. Almost ready. Got to remember how to use this thing. Okay. Can I 
yes, I can stretch it like that. Awesome, 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 awesome. Just gotta get the right font size. Okay, so A harmonic minor. We're gonna start with that. I'm gonna adjust the font size in just a moment. So that would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, which gives us the interval structure one, two, flat three, four, five, whoops, why did I put flat five? Five, six, seven. So it's basically a minor scale with a natural seven. Let's see, what would be a good font size here? That looks so funky. Hang on, let me try and make this look a little bit better. If we did that and then I stretch it out this way. There we go, that's much easier to read, cool. All right, so here we go with A harmonic minor. Here we got Nuno says, hearing the major against the other modes back and forth makes the difference quite apparent. Good, good, good. Mark Taylor. Can you talk a bit about making a chord progression, say in G Lydian, using more than just power chord and droning on one chord only? Yes, I will. Let's do the harmonic minor mode demo first, since that was brought up earlier, and then we'll get into chord progressions uh, that sound like the mode we want it to sound like. So. Look at that, we got things to talk about. And we got an hour to do it. Is that enough time? I hope so. All right, so harmonic minor. The first thing I'll do is play regular minor, just your Aeolian, and then I'll play it harmonic minor so you can hear the difference. Aeolian. Minor seven. Sounds aeolian. Well, you also might want to do it like this. So that's the root, flat third, five, flat six, flat seven. We'll change the seven to a or a flat seven to a natural seven. Playing a minor major seven arpeggio, very harmonic minor sound. Okay, the other popular mode using harmonic minor is Phrygian dominant. People love some Phrygian dominant. I'm gonna have to reduce the font size here. So, Phrygian dominant, I'm going to start by changing this stuff over here. Phrygian dominant has a flat two, a major third, or natural third. It also has a flat six and a flat seven. So the notes, so basically what you're doing here is like if you have your Phrygian mode, the Phrygian mode is this. That's Phrygian. 
And so Phrygian dominant is taking this flat third and raising it up a half step. It's called Phrygian dominant because it has a dominant seven chord within the mode, which is your first, third, fifth, and flat seven. That's your dominant seven. But then it's got that flat two in there as well, which is characteristic of Phrygian. So is the flat six. So anyway, there's an explanation as to why it's Phrygian dominant. It's got a dominant seven in there. Note-wise, I'm going to flat the B. C becomes C sharp. And let's see. We need a flat six. We need F. That's good there. And then a flat seven. So G sharp becomes G. And there we go. A Phrygian dominance. <laughs>
rewind this so we don't run out of room on our backing track here. All right, so Locrian first, then Locrian natural six. <laughs> this in G harmonic minor. up the most. <laughs> Some different, different harmonic minor modes right there. So yeah, if you look up, like, um, I know there's some sites out there. Where you just you can auto or you can generate different scales. You know, let's find one real quick. I used to use one regularly. Ooh, we got a YouTube notification. Let's see. Do I have it bookmarked still? Doesn't look like it. Uh, guitar scale generator. Well, there's the first one that comes up. All right, let's check this guy out. Right, I'm gonna gonna change some things here. So this one, shop car, we'll turn that off. Let's go back to this, this, there we go. And root note, so we'll go with A, and then it's got all kinds of stuff here. Let's see, will it let me zoom in the way I want it to? Yes, very nice, all right, cool. Yeah, it looks like this guy, you just hit your A. You got all kinds of mode stuff you can choose from down here. Lydian diminished. What the hell would be Lydian diminished? Because a sharp four is the same as a flat five in terms of the distance from the root note. Well, let's look, what would that be? You'd have a root. Second, flat third, there's your sharp four. There's the five. There is a natural six, natural seven. What? So it's basically, oh, I get it. Okay, that makes sense. It's a uh, Lydian diminished because when you flat the third, you basically have a diminished sound in there. Because the A, C, and D, well, D sharp makes the same sound as A, C, and E flat. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, I do something like that. Uh, let's see, full, 
vertical diagonal. Wait a minute. So we pick where we want the position here. Ugh, that looks awful. So if I do this to... No. Well, I'm not really caring for how these shapes look. So you might want to find a different slide. But you basically look up guitar scale generator. And you can find all kinds of stuff to have some fun with. Um, but yeah, like your harmonic minor. That's one way of playing the scales. Um, does it have the... No. Oh, you got... Look, I see you have common, rare. So you have all kinds of other stuff you can pick here. Exotic. Hungarian minor. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of sites out there. Just look up Guitar Scale Generator if you want to try out different mode shapes. But any any mode, any scale shape that starts on A, if you play to that A5 backing track, so if you look up Alfred Potter Drone, you'll find that. And, um, yeah, any scale that starts with an A will work fine over an A5 drone because it's just basically emphasizing that A note droning over and over and over again. Back to the comments. Uh, let's see. Nuno says, hang on, let me change this. You know, says, so the name of the mode in harmonic minor actually tells us what is the intervallic difference between that mode and the corresponding mode of the major scale. A lot of times, yes, there is some stuff you just kind of have to know. Um, like what's one that's not very... Like the seventh mode in harmonic minor is super locrian double flat seven. What the hell is that? <laughs> Super Locrian. Let's see. No, I, well, no, let's, I can open that back up real quick. No, I don't want it to display. Actually, <clears throat> just minimize this. Put you over here. Turn that off. All right, hold on. Add display. There we go. And I'm gonna do this. Or actually, you know, I should just do this. Get back to that. Okay. Uh, so real quick, I'm going to answer this, and then we're going to demonstrate the whole chord progression idea. But, uh, yeah, so Locrian has the interval structure 1, flat 2, flat 3, 4, flat 5, flat 6, flat 7. Super Locrian doesn't tell you what the difference is. You just have to know it, just like you... How do you know what Locrian is? You just need to learn what it is. How do you learn what Dorian is? You just need to learn what it is. Super Locrian, everything is flat. Flat two, flat three. Flat four, flat five, flat six, flat seven. Oop. Yeah. So the Super Locrian, double flat seven. So if you know what Super Locrian is, then Super Locrian double flat seven explains itself. So then we have the one, flat two, flat three, flat four, flat five, flat six, double flat seven. So if we were to actually play those things, Locrian. <laughs> Visualize. 
plays this super locrian double flat seven. <laughs> Take two, super locrian double flat seven. No, I'm fucking this up. What am I doing wrong here? Super low Korean double flat seven. All right, now that I've got my head wrapped around these things a bit better, now I know that shape more, like starting over here. From teaching and playing an A harmonic minor often, but anyway. So, low Korean, so we're starting on A. Korean. Super low Korean double flat seven. Now I just go through all three without saying which one is next, but same order. should have been uh, zoomed in on me no i guess not because we want to look at the modes okay so let's get to the chord stuff which was can you talk a bit about making a chord progression say in g lydian using more than just a power chord and droning on one chord only yes let's do that so what is g lydian let's just use that for the example the notes are G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. And the interval structure is one, two, three, sharp, four, five, six, seven. I just want to double check there, make sure I put that in right. G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G. Nice if I could have a a loop on this that wasn't distorted. Let me try something here real quick on my pedal that I don't know everything about. Sorry, that's a loop crunch. Octave. Clean. All right, here we go. So, let's see, so again, for Lydian, we have to have that sharp four in there. So, if we want to go like really simple, technically we just go between like the first and second chord, and I think that could be enough, that could be enough to make it sound Lydian if we just want to do like a two chord progression thing. So what would that be? We'd have a G major chord. And then we would have an A. Hang on a second. And it would be A minor. So no, that wouldn't be enough there. I don't think that's enough. Well, no, not A minor. What the hell's wrong with me? I take that back. It's not A minor. It's... I apologize. 
A major. Duh. Anyway, why that? Okay, so G, B, and D make your G major. A, C sharp, and E make E major. So go between those two. You know what? The loop thing might, well, let me see. This loop thing might be a problem. I'm gonna use Guitar Pro to help us out. I've done that before. Let's do it again. All right. Ooh, let me get that up. And I'm just gonna tab out a chord progression. New file, stringed, acoustic, create. All right, let's try something like this. What, it's not going to let me do that. Okay, apparently I can't do the thing I'm trying to do in this mode. It's going to work now. What's going on here? Thank you. God damn. Because if I do this, then it's going to be all funny, isn't it? too big now. Alright, let me just do... Yeah, that should work. <laughs> Shit! Sorry about that. God damn, that was loud. Holy crap. Damn, Guitar Pro. Freaking trying to kill our ears here. All right, so why these two chords? Because going into that A major chord, it's using that C sharp. All right, let me change this here so I can have both up at the same time. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. So that's why those two chords, because not only is it hitting the tonic chord, as described in the video we reacted to, but it's also using that sharp four in the mode when we play the A major chord. So.
did like seventh chords instead. So basically we go every other note here. That would give us a G major seven. And then we would have an A dominant seven. Let's hear how that sounds. Thank you, Guitar Pro. Man, what the... It just died. We'll definitely do a 1-4-5 progression. God. Guitar Pro just crashed. Okay. No, just close. Just close. Let's try this again. Sensitive little program. My god. All right, I better try and do as little as possible here to not upset this delicate software. Freaking silly. How can. Oh, whatever. <laughs> but I want that larger. <sighs> All right, hold on. Maybe I can do this. up here do this do this all right hopefully that's good enough all right yeah so yeah let's uh the seventh chords Major seven, a dominant seven. So we'll go between these two, and then yeah, we'll try out the uh, one, four, five stuff. Take care, Nuno. Appreciate you participating in the chat. We'll see you next time. All right, here we go. Hopefully, the volume's still all right. <laughs> that loop back on. five deal so let's delete that guy actually let me do it like this no never mind all right so if you do one four five g is the one two three four c sharp is the root note for the four and that would give us c sharp e and g Let's go back here. We'll just do standard triads. We get G. So C sharp, E, and G. That is diminished. So C sharp diminished. Yeah. Put this in first. C sharp diminished. And then that would be a D major. 
we'd have the notes D, F sharp, and A. So let's do the G twice. And then we'll go into the C sharp diminished. I said we're going to do the G twice. So let's listen to that and then solo on top. something like uh, I mentioned before a G suspended sharp 4 is excellent or a suspended sharp 4 is excellent to make it sound Lydian like you can't go wrong with that if I just did a G sus wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute they're just G sus sharp 4 I have some more chords here in a sec we also got a question over here Mike is double flat seven the same as the Hungarian scale? So like the Hungarian minor scale or Hungarian major? If it's Hungarian minor, that would have, um, that's root second, flat third, be root second, flat third, sharp four, five, flat six, flat seven. And then, yes, yeah, so that would be the Hungarian minor right there. And so basically, I'll, I'll say it like this. The double flat seven will not be present in Hungarian minor. It can't. Because Hungarian minor is not the same as harmonic minor. And because of that one note difference, you can never have the same mode again. So, like, harmonic minor has its own set of seven different modes. Hungarian minor has its own set of seven different modes. Just like, you know, the major scale has its own set of seven different modes. That's why I keep getting on, getting on about people saying, oh, all seven modes. Like, no, that is not all seven modes. There's a hell of a lot more. So let's arpeggiate a G suspended sharp four, and then we'll do something else with that so we have more than just the one chord. So a G suspended sharp four is G, C sharp, and D. Let's see, how would I like to do that here? So like that. Man, my hour is almost up. All right, 
so put it like this. Again, this is a G suspended sharp four, which tells us we have root a sharp four and a five. And I put the sharp four in twice. So the C sharp is done twice to really highlight that sound. So if you want something that sounds Lydian, you can't go wrong with using that chord right there. some other unique ones here so let's pick some other chords that have a C sharp within it um, so obviously this one does Could add in the sixth interval too. Why not? And I would call that. G6 suspended sharp four because we have root third no we have root sharp four or five and a six let's see I see the C sharp diminished has the C sharp or if it is something a little bit different though Do that too. That sounds kind of neat. So we do that. Four, five, six. Uh, that would be a three. Now that should be the key of D. G Lydian, key of D major. All right, so that chord on its own is a C sharp suspended flat second flat five. Adding in the E note here, which is your flat third. Sure for that, which would give us a C sharp diminished add flat nine. And I'm gonna do this. So there we go.
quick question here from <laughs> Schmooze Beefenstein. Question is, why do I favor jamming over this chord progression in B Aeolian? Because G Lydian is the same group of notes as B Aeolian. It's the same thing in terms of the notes. This is in the key of D major. <laughs> Relative of B or uh, D major is B minor or B aeolian, which is the same seven notes as G Lydian. So that would be why, just because it is, it fits. It's the same seven notes. So playing just the B aeolian shape. To sum up the question of how do you make a chord progression sound like the mode, you need to use the unique interval enough within it. So like going between the G major and A major I think would work fine because you keep using that C sharp note, which is the note that makes it Lydian. And obviously picking some exotic sounding notes like this can help out a lot too. So even if you just took a G major chord, Take a G major chord again. And like maybe just like. Change this back here. Ooh. Yeah, if you just take a G major chord and. Take that D note, turn it into a C sharp. Glad it helped. Good to hear. Now, if you're using like the old three string one, you can also play the C sharp over here. So, yeah, as long as you get that, that sharp four in there, it'll sound Lydian. Um, and there we go. All right. The bathroom urge has hit me once again. So, and it's about time for me to wrap things up. Got to take care of some stuff. So, thank you to everyone who came in for the stream. Lots of good talk today. Definitely a worthwhile video watching that we reacted to. So, the link to that video is in the description. And the title's right there, too. So, yes, the Demonstrating All Seven Modes in Parallel. Very good video. Not a fan of saying all seven modes. If it said all seven modes of the major scale, I would be much happier with that. But there you go. That's that. All right. I will see everyone on the next stream, most likely next week. Whoops, I was at the wrong button.